You think that I'm not a hunter like you. And I'm not a threat. That is what makes me dangerous. You can't see. But I'm killing you. And it won't either. Hey everyone, today's video will be on the 2022 film Prey, starring Amber Midthunder. To be clear, the points I will be covering in this review are elements of the movie that stand out to me. Apologies if I say anything similar to, or repeat anything other YouTubers have discussed, or if I missed anything that stood out to you all. To be honest, I wasn't really into the Predator franchise before this film. Granted, certain elements of it I did find interesting, just not enough to make me want to watch and read everything Predator related. I did watch or read bits and pieces here and there, just to see what the franchise was like. I did watch the 2010 Predators movie, which wasn't half bad. With this movie though, I was interested. The characters, the setting, the plot, all these aspects in Prey had me intrigued and had me waiting in anticipation for the film. The leading lady had a powerful, defining story and good character development. Maru's journey in this movie was a story of struggle and growth. She wanted to prove herself to her tribe and to her family. She believed and dreamed of being a great huntress to prove to those who doubted her wrong. A lot of people were complaining about how they didn't want to see a woman beating a predator, thinking she was going to overpower the alien with such big strong men couldn't overpower one. That's the thing though, she defeated the predator without needing to. Naru had to learn and adapt to become who she became at the end. We saw from the start that she had talent, there was obvious promise and potential within her. Yet we see her fail more than once, struggling to hunt rabbits and deer even with her loyal dog Sari by her side. The first main instance of Naru struggling to become a huntress is when she joins her brother Tabe and the other hunters in trying to kill a mountain lion. We saw that she can quickly create tactical plans in a relatively short time that proved to later be a decisive advantage against a predator. While she did get distracted by something she didn't understand when she and the cat were face to face, she was still more than just nervous. Because of this, brother killing the beast, bringing her home, her anger at supposedly being proven wrong, being ignored for her trying to warn her brother of something else out there, she started to get more reckless while trying to discover what else was out there. This is most prominent when she comes across a grizzly bear and tries to kill it. Though this was more so her trying to defend herself as the wind blew her and Sari sent towards the bear, then finds herself trapped by the beast. Against the mountain lion and the bear, we see her being understandably overwhelmed and afraid. Being face to face with these two fierce and powerful animals would make anyone understandably terrified. She learns from these events, including being captured by the French trappers who cruelly slaughtered the bison and utilizes one of their weapons against the predator. Just a side note, it's unrelated. I just hate these kinds of traps and what pain they inflict on animals and people as well. I also loved watching her kick the asses of those merry band of assholes. <laughs> In the final fight against the Predator, we see Naru use all that she's learned against this formidable adversary. With knowledge of the environment, she trapped him in the bog. Her constructed traps and hazards deal extra injuries when the Predator tried to outmaneuver her. Her usage of the orange Tutsia gave her a secret weapon, as her experience as a healer aided her in being practically invisible to the Predator because of the plant's effect on the blood and gave her the chance to injure the Predator. Her training and adapting with her weapons and her study of the Predator's weapons and tactics utilized both of their strengths to her advantage. This led to her forcing her injured foe into a position he couldn't readily escape from, which ended with her tricking the Predator into using his own weapon against him. NANI? Through cunning, courage, and the aid of Sari, Naru was able to defeat the entity that killed her brother and become the huntress she was meant to be. As to the predator in this film, betrayal and execution of the character really hit its mark. Just to be clear, my knowledge of the predators isn't great, so sorry if I say anything incorrect about them. It's mostly me speaking on what I saw and a few of the things I've heard about them. With what we saw, this predator's threat was clearly established as to how it hunted and its state of prowess. Not to mention this predator had his own story explored here, sorta. 
a hunter set on his own quest to test himself against whatever he sets his sights on. We see the predator work his way through the local ecosystem, studying and choosing which of the predatory animals to hunt. And we also see moments of the predator's incredible prowess on display in these moments. The scene with the snake displayed the predator's reaction speed. Facing the bear showcased the predator's strength and durability. The battle with the bear was when Naru witnessed and realized the true power of whatever this entity was. Especially once he raised the bear over his head and roared in victory in one particular moment. One punch was what it took for this predator to kill a titan like the grizzly bear. One punch. Though we did see the bear overpower the predator for a short bit, we also saw how the predator did in combat against armed foes as well, being able to kill several armed trappers and Comanche warriors. I do think one of the most defining sets of scenes was the predator's combat and story with the wolf. The wolf struck first blood and didn't back down, continuing to fight on against an opponent it didn't understand till its last breath. Then later we saw the predator take its skull and hook it onto its trophy belt, I think. Was that a sign of the predator showing respect? I've heard they do that with some kills that they thought were worthy prey or opponents. If it's true, I think it was a defining feature of the predator and this movie. The wolf is the symbol of honor, courage, and ferocity. An animal truly respected by the First Nations. And the predator recognizing this in the wolf's stand against him showed he had respect for what he hunts, rather than what some hunters do. The battle with the trapper showcased it chose to fight against opponents that are armed and a threat rather than those who aren't, like Naru and Tabe were at this point. They say this predator was rather inexperienced, or that's what I've heard. From where I'm standing, this predator looked fairly experienced from the way it fought the trappers given the different kinds of techniques and killing moves he used. The kill with the trap was one of the best in the movie. Focusing on the threat rather than the defenseless siblings showed that the predator did follow a code. <laughs> Though we do see the Predator does fight to win too, given how he killed Tabe since he and Naru were keeping him off balance and severely injuring him during that scene. This film really set the tone, conflict, and its other defining elements effectively. It gave good introductions to the characters and a look into their personalities, drives, and roles in the story. Naru's journey and character set up that she had a way to go before she was ready to go up against a hunter of the Predator's caliber. The film didn't present Naru as the badass she was meant to be fully at the start. We saw her run from the Predator more than once. This didn't mean Naru was weak. It was a natural reaction that anyone would have when face to face with a being one doesn't understand. The last time she truly ran from the Predator was when her brother urged her to flee so she could return and kill the entity. With every kill, animal, and man, it felt like the Predator couldn't be stopped. We do see, though, he wasn't invincible. Given the predator bled at the jaws of the wolf and the bear, not to mention during the valiant fight Tabe put up against him, and with his final words, he encouraged Naru to find the will and courage to defeat the predator. The incredible cast and representation of one of the First Nations in this movie was truly defining to this film. I just need to say my knowledge and understanding of the First Nations and their cultures, customs, and traditions is extremely limited, or in this case specifically, the Comanche. I don't want to or mean to present that I have a great understanding of the Comanche Nation. I clearly don't. We see that the First Nations actors and characters get the leading roles, rather than getting supporting roles even though the main roles should be theirs, as unfortunately some movies have done. I do have to perhaps nitpick and say we mainly got two fleshed out characters, Aru and Tabe. I'm not saying the film is bad for giving focus to them, there just could have been more scenes dedicated to the other characters and their relationships. Though back to my point, look into these people's lives, especially Naru's, gives some insight into their customs and beliefs that define the collective group's way of life and what's valued by the Comanche Nation. Naru's desire to be a great huntress and to prove her prowess by succeeding in her kutumi, apologies if I pronounced that wrong, to hunt an animal that can hunt you presents one's drive and will to survive. Tabe proved himself to the tribe, and though he was hesitant about his sister trying to hunt, he saw and recognized her potential. It's seeing her adapt and prove herself, and in his last moments of both regret for what he said earlier, are what makes him urge her to kill the predator. Portraying these First Nations characters as their own individuals, rather than stereotypes, or the same in regards to their personalities, is what helps make their relationships and connections that much more compelling. We have the rebellious and courageous Naru, the protective yet supportive Tabe, 
and we have the assholes of the group. The movie also portrays the meeting or clashing of the First Nations with the white men, with Naru not understanding what those racist trappers were saying and how cruelly they treated her, save for the translator, and watching in horror at how they tortured her brother, the realization that they had slaughtered the bison, and how they tried to use Naru and Tabe as bait for the predator, from the perspective of Naru and the other Comanche, and thus an insight into how the First Nations perceived their meetings with the white men. Given we are following the story from their perspective, we are going to see things through their eyes. After watching this film, I looked into more of the Predator franchise. What I found had some interesting bits here and there. Some stories were more compelling than others. It's just Prey, to me, is the best of the franchise. As the prequel to the franchise, it also could or would aid that the film would be a good standalone film too. The story that it tells and the characters we come to know within it have stood out to me the most. This isn't to say that the rest of the stories with the Predator are bad, mind you. It was also good to see those complaining about the woman lead prove him wrong. It was irritating to see how dismissive they were. Well, dismissive is putting it mildly. Still, from Naru's journey to the depiction and presentation of this Predator, their tense and nail-biting final battle, to the deeper elements and messages from the Comanche perspective, this blend of significant and crucial factors came together to tell a powerful and effective story. Nevertheless, let me know what you all thought of this movie and its plot, characters, and more. I hope you liked this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Once again, I hope you liked this video, and thank you for watching.